Well, hey, everybody. Welcome back to My View on the View, a commentary program all about my favorite show, ABC's The View. A lot of you tuning in today. It is your favorite show as well. I'm your host, MVOTV, and I make The View's table relatable, relatable to our everyday lives, that is. Listen, I wanted to say this early on before I jump in the thick of this, (laughs) before I jump in the fire, (laughs) the opinion fire. Um, that I appreciate all of you for being here. And listen, don't forget, because we all forget from time to time. I'm not going to ask you to do it now. You know, I understand some people need a little bit of time to make up their mind. But I want to ask you, please stop forgetting to give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Listen, you don't have to donate. You don't have to comment. You don't have to share. But that is always, for me as a content creator, an easy way for me to know how many of you are for me here and you're rocking with me versus how many of you aren't. And I know some people use the thumbs up, thumbs down for different things. Some people say, hey, listen, I don't always agree with you, but hey, I do like hanging out with you, so thumbs up. But then some people use it to express their agreement or disagreement. You listen, either way, it's okay. That's why I'm saying thumbs up or <laughs> thumbs down. Of course, I prefer the thumbs up, okay? But, you know, we all have a right to thumbs up or thumbs down, okay? So please don't forget to do that. Also, I want to also let you know that um, if you want to comment, you're welcome to do that because the comment section will be open today. Now, you know... I've never quite gone as far as I'm going to go today. (laughs) And I realize I am walking in some very treacherous territory. And what do I mean by that? I realize that I have a lot of people listening to me who are a part of the LGBTQ plus community. And you've been very supportive of me throughout the years. And some of you are new. And so you haven't heard uh, my personal views on that subject. Um, But you're going to hear them today. And it's going to be very upsetting to some of you. I'm very much aware of that. Some of you will unsubscribe. You will just say, hey, now that I know this is what you really think and believe, I just cannot support you anymore. I want to say to you, I understand. I do. I really do. And I want to encourage you to not waste any time. Okay, because people have done this throughout the years. You know, they type out this long comment letting me know how terrible they think I am and how could I. They're so disappointed to hear me say the things I've said. All those things are a waste of your time because I don't actually know you, okay? And you don't actually know me either, okay? So just, if you're going to leave, like I said, I understand, okay? But don't make a fuss about it. You know how kids do when before they go to their room, they have to kind of fall down and flip over the table before they leave, you know, and go in their room. No, just go in the room. <laughs> just go in the room, right? So anyway, so having said all that, let's jump to it. You know, I was watching the show today and this conversation has come up many, many times over the past 25 years. Uh, Joy wasn't there today. Oh, by the way, Whoopi was back. You know what? Wait, wait, y'all. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta do it. I gotta do it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Y'all know. Uh, although, you know, we'll be getting on my nerves every now and again. She is um, uh, she is someone I really do enjoy and I think is just fantastic for our show. And so I am happy to see her back. OK, but um, over the last 25 years, anytime this conversation comes up, especially when Joy is there, because Joy really, really gets ugly uh, with those of us who don't agree with same sex relationships. And she says that something is wrong with us. Uh, Anna does, too. Anna wasn't there today. Um, but Anna has also said over the years that those of us who don't agree um, with same sex relationships, those of us who think that they are wrong, that we have a problem. You know, and she, I've even heard Anna say, maybe we're secretly gay and just don't know it. Maybe that's why we have such a problem, she says, with those who are part of the LGBTQ plus community. Well, guys, you know, that's foolishness, right? If you don't know, now you know. OK, that's foolishness to to I mean, you think about anything in society. Be it anything um, that is considered a hot button issue. Don't we all have a right to our own personal beliefs? Even if we think the other person is wrong, don't they have a right to their beliefs? You see, I am finding more and more and more as I blog about this show. And as much as I love Anna, as much as I love Sonny, you know, that they too have a problem with people who don't see things their way. And how do we know that people have a problem when we don't see things their way is when they feel like they have to belittle us call us names, say something is wrong with you. Matter of fact, they're the one doing the hate. Listen, someone expressing the fact that they disagree 
with someone's decision or choice, that is not the same as hatred, y'all. You know, we're going to have to grow up emotionally and learn what hatred really is. Now, if somebody walked up to you and punched you or punched me or, you know, burned down our house because of our decisions and choices, well, now that is hatred. But someone's saying, you know what? Hey, I just don't think this is right. That is not the same as hatred. That's called disagreement. Okay. But, you know, some things were said on the show today that have been said on and off for 25 years. Now, I've not been vlogging about the show for as long as I've been watching it. So you realize that, right? But I want to um, play a clip of several things. I'm looking at some notes here. Several things that were said on the show today. Now, let me just point out something. Okay. At the table today, we had three women who say they are Christians. Okay. Sonny Hostin is a Catholic. Catholicism is based on the Bible. Okay. We have Alyssa Vera Griffin, who also has told us that she's a Christian. You know, she's Southern Baptist. And then we have Sarah Haynes. Okay. And then we had Whoopi. Now, Whoopi has told us over the years that, listen, she, you know, she and God have a very interesting relationship. That's what she's called it. But she said, I'm not a woman of prayer. I'm not a woman of faith. You know, I believe in God. But, you know, as I've told you all over the years, you know, anytime Whoopi starts trying to talk about what God thinks and like she said today, um, and you'll hear it in just a moment if you miss the show. You know, Whoopi always fumbles the ball because what Whoopi needs to realize, and I have no problem saying this, is that, you know, she's just not good when it comes to talking about what God thinks and what the Bible says, because she doesn't actually know what the Bible says, because she at 67 has never taken time to find out what the Bible says about these things. And so what I want to say today is this. It is wrong. It is wrong for those of us like Alyssa Farrah Griffin, like Sarah Haynes, like Sonny Hostin, Okay, who say that we are Bible believing Christians. It is wrong for us to pick and choose which scriptures we're going to believe versus the ones we aren't. That's the point today. Now, same sex relationships is just what they were talking about today. All right. But you understand this could be taken and applied to anything, be it lying be it adultery. I think Sonny would have a problem <laughs> if Manny picked and chose what he wanted to believe from the Bible about. Maybe he says, maybe he would say, hey, Proverbs 20, 12, 22 says God hates lying and that lying is an abomination to him, but he loves those who tell the truth. Okay. I'm going to believe that scripture, but this over here about adultery, uh, I'm just not going to believe that. What if he decided to pick and choose what he was going to believe from the Bible? I do believe she'd have a problem with it. Why? Because all of us would say, now I'm talking to all of us who are Christians. If you're not a Christian, please just listen. Okay. But you're not a part of this because you, if you're not a Christian, you know, you're not someone who even believes the Bible. Okay. And you're definitely not someone who's trying to live according to what the Bible says. And again, I'm not trying to be rude, but we just got to cut through it here and make sure people understand who this conversation is for. So those of us who say we're Christians, it's wrong. I got to say it again. It's wrong to pick and choose what we believe from the Bible. It's wrong. Now, I don't know, you know, because some people say that if you pick and choose what you believe from the Bible, you're not really a Christian. You are your own God. You're not really worshiping the God of the Bible. You're worshiping your God, the God you made up in your head, the one who believes everything you believe. If you say, okay, he says, okay. If you say it's right, he says it's right. Well, see, that's not the God of the Bible. Let me tell you something. I would love to be able to lie anytime I wanted to. If I want to get out of trouble, just tell a good old lie. If I wanted to get out of a traffic ticket, sir, I'm blind. I, I'm legally blind, but I left my drive. You know, I would love to come up with a bunch of lies, but the Bible says lying is wrong. So see, I can't pick and choose what I want to believe as a Bible believing Christian, or else I can't call myself a Bible, Bible believing Christian. You know, it's a, it was days like this that I wish Elizabeth was there because she is that I have noticed one of the only Christians who come to this table who was willing to speak up about this. Again, I'm not specifically just talking about homosexuality or same sex relationships. I'm talking about the a broader concept of folks who say they're Christians, but they pick and choose what scriptures they want to believe. I think if you were on a sports team and the coach gave you the play, you know, the play um, instructions, you would not have the ability to stay on that team and yet pick and choose which plays you're going to run versus the one you aren't. In which case you would be your own coach, right? You would not be following the coach of the team. It's something like that, okay? 
So what I want to do is let me just play the clip for you. We're going to hear Sarah say something, and then I'm going to address what Sarah said. We're going to hear um, Sunny say something that she said many times before on the show. And then we're going to hear uh, something else, okay? We're going to hear Whoopi at the end. Now, I will tell you, because this segment was very long today, I did speed it up. I sped it up to 1.5. So they were not actually speaking this fast. And if you have a problem, y'all know we got folks like that, with me speeding up clips, then just don't listen. Just click off and unsubscribe and go somewhere else, okay? But I chose to speed it up so we can get through all of what they had to say more quickly, okay? So let's listen, and then I'm going to come back, and I'm going to give you my view on The View. Let's go. I think we're living in a time where people have taken a self-righteous flag in the way they live, and they have banged it over people's head. It, it, as someone who was raised in the church, it breaks my heart that people weaponize religion mm. in the way that they're doing, because self-righteousness, which might seem kind of evasive when you look at it, is the division of people. It is looking at someone else and focusing on their differences and you being better than them. There are a gazillion quotes in the Bible about how wrong that is. I was raised to love thy neighbor and we are not the judge. There is a power that has that power. There is a place for that. But we are here to be inclusive and you'll never find a more inclusive place than a gay bar. I've spent a lot of time in them. Me they too. are super straight friendly. And they're and, super fun. And the, the part that really gets me is they. the reason gay people have always had, queer people have had stigma. They always have faced it themselves personally in their own lives out in the greater world. World. It's increasing as time goes on. They were in a safe place when this happened. They were in a place that accepts them for who they were, and someone came to that place. And that's what's so sad. And part... I don't know that they hide behind religion because but... I said this on this show once before. Jesus would be the grand marshal at the pride parade. I don't mean I about really, gay really people. I mean that. in every argument we have. But here's your religion. Here's my religion. religion. But it's wrong. Mm -hmm. If you're so afraid, why are you going over there? Yeah. If they scare you so much, leave them alone. When stuff scares me, I leave it alone. Mm -hmm. If I don't want to be bothered, I don't go there. See, that's the problem. You don't want to just have your feelings. You want everybody else to join you. And you know what? You can, you can scream. You can cuss. You can do all the things that you say. But you know what? Gay people are here. They're not going anywhere. There is nothing you can do. You know, you can yell and scream. But, you know, as, as the Lord, as everybody was talking about, you know, made in God's image. Yep. Made in God's image. There are no but except for. There's none of that. No. Keep that in mind when you're trying to figure out where you stand as a human being, let alone a Christian. We'll be right back. All right. So let's start off with what Sarah said there. You know, we heard Sarah clearly picking and choosing. Again, stay with me, y'all. I'm coming from the perspective of someone who is a Christian. I'm trying to counter this narrative that's out there, not just on our show, but that's all out there everywhere that you can be a Bible believing Christian and yet pick and choose what you want to believe from the Bible. So we heard her talk about, <clears throat> there are quote, a gazillion scriptures that talk about love thy neighbor. Does Sarah not understand that there are a gazillion scriptures that talk about same sex relationships being wrong? Does she not know that? Does she not know those scriptures? So is Sarah picking and choosing what she's going to believe? Sounds like it. Sounds like she's chosen to believe the scriptures in the Bible that talk about loving your neighbor, but not the scriptures that talk about same sex relationships are wrong, according to the God of the Bible, not according to you. If you're your own God, so you would think whatever, but we're talking about, and I got to keep reiterating this people who say they're Christians and they're Bible believing Christians. You, you see what we're talking about here, right? So I hope you can stay on point here. Let me just go over some scriptures in the Bible that talk about same sex relationships. So give me just a second here. Let me scroll down. <clears throat> I'm going to give you some from the old and new. And the reason I'm going to, there's one in the new I'm particularly going to give because it kind of talks and addresses people like Sonny and other people who support certain things. Okay. So we all know the story of the children of Israel, whether you're a Christian or not, right? We understand that, listen, uh, the family of Abraham, right, his descendants, after Joseph died, they were down in Egypt because of the famine, right? And um, there, became, there came a, a person over Egypt who didn't know God. He didn't follow what Joseph had taught. And so he became fearful of the Egyptians, excuse me, of uh, the Hebrews, because they were, you know, multiplying so fast. And so he said that in essence, you know, we need to control these people. We need to kind of get this under control or else they're going to come up against us. They'll join our neighbors and fight against us. So they put the children of Israel, the Hebrews, into bondage, right? And they were in bondage for a long, long time, right? Now, 
God, through miracle signs and wonders, he brings them out of Egypt and he declares through Moses that he wants these people to be his chosen people. Okay. And so a part of what God had to do was he said to Moses, I've got to teach them. I've got to give them my laws so that they will not, you know, repeat the things that they learned in Egypt. So we bring, this brings me to Leviticus 18 verses 22 through 24. This is God giving the laws to Moses, just like he wrote the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai with his his finger. He also gave Moses many, many laws. Remember in Leviticus, God even talked to them about how to treat your animals. You know, so he he didn't focus just on (laughs) same sex relationships. Okay, he talked about how to treat your animals, how to deal with mold in your houses, how to deal with people who were foreigners how to treat them. He dealt with all of that. But this is what he said in Leviticus 18, 22 through 24. Verse 22 says this. This is what he told Moses to tell them. Do not. See, that's very clear, right? Do not have sexual relations with a man as one does with a woman. That is detestable. Does Sarah know that scripture exists? Verse 22. Do not. See, that's very clear. For those of us as Christians, this is very clear. No ifs, ands, or about it. God says here in verse 22, do not have sexual relations with an animal and defile yourself with it. I think all of us as Christians would agree, right? We, we choose that one to believe, right? Because we all think it is defiled. It, it, I mean, it's detestable and perverted to try to do something like that. But what about the scripture right above it, though? Now let's go to verse 24. Do not... See, once again, God is very clear. Do not defile yourselves in any of these ways. So that not just includes the animals, but that includes what he said before he said that about the animals. Because this is how the nations that I am going to drive out before you became defiled. So see, God sees these things that were just talked about as detestable, as perversions, as defilement. See, those scriptures are there just like the love thy neighbor scriptures that Sarah was talking about, the gazillion scriptures. Now let me go to a New Testament scripture that I want to read that admonishes those of us to be very careful about the things that we choose to support. So just a second, let me scroll. Oh my gosh, did I lose it? I think I did. I got so much stuff pulled up here. Excuse me, guys, just a second. Please be patient. Let me, maybe I didn't, maybe it's up here. Hold on, y'all. I'm thinking out loud. No, that's first king. Oh, there's so many scriptures. Oh, here it is. Okay. New Testament. Now in the New Testament, there are lots of scriptures about this too, but I'm just choosing Romans 132. Now I will tell you, there's a word here that's mentioned in Romans 132 that I'm going to leave out. Okay. So, but you on your own can go and read the entire scripture. It says, now this is the Apostle Paul writing to the churches, the New Testament churches, the believers in Jesus Christ. At this point, uh, by the book of Romans, Jesus has died. He's gone into hell. He's been raised from the dead. He's ascended up into heaven and he's given uh, his, you know, told the 70 and the rest go out and teach and preach and do all the things he said. And we know Paul was one of the founders, not excuse me, not one of the founders, but one of the chief apostles of the church. Most of the New Testament is written by the Apostle Paul. Listen to what he told the churches. Although, this is verse 32, although they know. Now, before 32, he was talking about men and women who are given over to lust for each other, meaning women to women and men to men. He's talking about those people in verse 31. Then he says in verse 32, although they know God's righteous decree. Why? The righteous decree was given to the children of Israel. God's already spoken on this issue. See, this isn't up for debate. So he says, although they know God's righteous decree, that those who do such things deserve blank. They not only, listen, here it goes for those of us who support this kind of stuff. They not only continue to do these very things, but also approve of those who practice them. Does Sonny not know that scriptures in the Bible? Does Sarah not know that scripture is right along with all the love thy neighbor scriptures that are in the New Testament? Again, what am I talking about? Am I talking about same sex relationships or am I talking about as Christians? Those of us who say we name the name of Christ and that we are Bible believing Christians. Am I talking about the fact that we 
cannot or we should not be picking and choosing which scriptures we want to believe. That's what I'm talking about. If you need, if you kind of got confused, I'm talking about the latter, not the former. Let's go to something else. <clears throat> we heard Sarah say there, you know, Sarah is always talking about, you know, she didn't say it right there, but if you watch the show every day, like I do, you know, Sarah has a big problem with people lying. I mean, you know, again, because she was raised in a, in a, in a religious home where the Bible was taught, you know, and she talks all the time about how wrong it is for people to lie. You know, there are scriptures that about lying, that lying is wrong. Sarah knows those scriptures, but does she not know the other scriptures that are there? You see, once again, I'm talking about picking and choosing. Guys, what, what is that? What kind of mess is that? Okay, let's go to what uh, Sonny said there. We've heard Sonny say this before, that Jesus would be the grand marshal at the pride parade. You know what? She's right. He would be, but he wouldn't be there doing what she thinks. He, he wouldn't be there doing what she thinks he'd be there doing. Oh, yeah, he'd be there. All right. But you know what he'd be doing? What did Jesus say? If he was there, what did he say about places he was in the New Testament? What did he say? Why did he say he was there with people who were whose behaviors and choices were against what God has said? Like in that time, the tax collectors and all. What did he say he was there for? He said, because the well don't need a physician. The sick do. Does Sonny not know those scriptures that are in her Bible? Does she not know that? Does she not understand that many, many times in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus was visiting with various people where the religious people, the scribes and the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the religious teachers of that day said, what are you doing over there? And he made it clear while he was there and he wasn't there dancing and having fun. He wasn't there celebrating with them. He was there because he said each and every time he was asked, the sick need a physician, not the well. That's why I'm here. So Sonny, who says she's a Christian and I believe she is. She seems to think Jesus would be the grand marshal because he'd be there happy and celebrating with all the people and approving of whatever. But see, that is not what the Bible says. That's not what the Bible says. And what did Jesus say? He said, when you see me, you see the father. Didn't he say that in the New Testament on my Bible readers? You know it, right? What did Jesus say? He said in the New Testament, I don't say nothing that my father don't tell me to say. I don't do nothing that my father don't tell me to do. When you see me, you see him. So we can then say that Jesus would be, look at, let me look at my nose, the grand marshal at the pride parade doing what she would claim he'd be there doing because God's already made it clear what he thinks about these types of things. And the old and new Testament is consistent from beginning to end from, from the first book to the last. And Jesus said, if you see me, you see him. I don't do nothing that he don't tell me to do. So we can't say that Jesus and God would have had a different agenda when it comes to this or anything else. Remember, he wasn't just sitting with the tax collectors. It was with the liars too, because the Bible says lying is wrong. And even though you're listening and you may have a problem with lying, you have to own up to the fact that it's wrong. You can't just choose not to believe those scriptures because, well, I lie. So, well, I'm just going to kind of ignore that, that the Bible says lying is wrong. What am I talking about? What is my view on the view talking about? Am I talking about same sex relationships or am I talking about this growing trend of people who say they are Christians, who name the name of Jesus Christ, who say they are Bible believers, picking and choosing which scriptures they want to believe and which scriptures they want to talk about. Sonny, if you're listening today, you're wrong, sis. I don't mind telling you you're wrong. And matter of fact, I will just go so far as saying this. I would think God would be quite disappointed in what you did today and not just what you've done today, what you've said before. Because when it comes to adultery, my sister, you are strong on that scripture. You've even told us you would hurt Manny. And we know you're joking. Maybe you weren't, but we just take it as you were joking. If he ever cheated on you, you're strong on those scriptures. But sis, what about these other scriptures? How dare you sit there as someone who says you're a woman of God and say that these things, people who say that these things are not right, that, th that they're wrong. When your Bible says it's wrong. Yes, your Catholic Bible says it's wrong. Sarah, my sis, if you're listening today or someone on your team, Brian, if you're listening or someone, 
you know, this somebody needs to come, not me, because <laughs> see, this is my little corner right here. Not me, but somebody needs to be at that table who has the cojones to say, I'm a Christian too. And I'm a Bible believer too. And you know what? Just like Sarah, you're right. There are a gazillion scriptures that talk about love thy neighbor. And Sonny, you're right. Jesus would be the grand marshal of the pride parade. But what does the Bible say about these other things? We cannot pick and choose as Christians what we want to believe or else, guys, I have to say, are we really Christians? Are we really, really worshiping the God of the Bible or is it the God we've made up in our heads? Let's go to what Whoopi said. Whoopi is right. Gay people have been always been here. Yes. You know, they were in Bible days, too, or else God wouldn't have talked about it. <laughs> but made in God's image. You know, we know Whoopi was insinuating there that gay people are made in God's image. You know what? They are just like straight people are made in God's image. I don't disagree with her there because male and female are made in God's image. Actually, let me, let me correct myself. Actually, only men are made in God's image. According to the scripture, we, as women were taken out of man, we were made in man's image. See, God created Adam in his image and his likeness. And then he pulled us out of him. That's why we're called a woe man, a man with a womb, a woman. So, But when Whoopi said there, (laughs) there is no buts. Does Whoopi not know all these scriptures? There are lots of buts. Mm -hmm. See, God loves all of us, y'all. Straight, gay, bisexual, trans, black, white, Hispanic, Pakistani, Asian. God loves all of us. But if we're Christians, do we actually believe that things that God has specifically said are wrong, like gluttony, like pride, like arrogance, like judgment, being judgmental and critical, like uh, same-sex relationships, like uh, trying to have a relationship with an animal. So we can't ignore all those other things and say, well, (laughs) because I'm doing it, you know, I can just ignore that scripture or because my son or my brother or my sister or my, you name, you fill in the blank. Listen, guys, as I end, I want to encourage every single one of you listening to me who named the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You've accepted him as your Lord and Savior. You believe the Bible. You're saying that you are Bible believing Christian. You have got to start speaking up in whatever way you can. Now, let me tell you something. It's not us against them. That's never my, my attitude. Never, never has been. It's not us against anybody that the Bible or any anybody displaying the behavior the Bible says is wrong, whether it's lying or gluttony or mistreating your animals. No, it's not us against them. But we do have to counter this narrative out there that you can be a Bible believing Christian and yet pick and choose what scriptures you want to believe. See, I would love for someone, not me, because this is my little corner where I am countering the narrative. But I would love for someone to pose this. I'd just love to know what does Sonny and Sarah and Alyssa have to say to this? How, what is, what is their response to how is it that you can be a Christian and yet pick and choose which Bible scriptures you want to believe? That would be very interesting to hear what they have to say. Very, very interesting. Because if you think adultery is wrong, Sonny, because that's what your Bible says. And if your faith tells you abortion is wrong and you have no exceptions, not even for a child, even though let's talk about that real quickly. Now, y'all know what I said when it came to Elizabeth. I said, those of us who are going to tell people that abortion is wrong, we can't say unless we can come up with a scripture. God thinks, you know, fill in the blank. Well, when it comes to. A child having their fa- a little girl having her father's baby. You see, we obviously know God would be against that. Can I tell you why? Because see, there are many scriptures in the Old Testament and New that talk about certain things that God is solely against. So we can infer what God thinks about something similar based on what he thinks about the act itself. For instance, in the Old Testament, in Leviticus and other scriptures where God was giving them the laws, one of the things that he said never to do was that a child should never see their parents' nakedness. You know that scripture? Do we know that? Remember the sons of Noah, the one who, when his father was drunk in his tent, he went in there and he saw his father naked and the curse that came on him because, and his descendants, he just wasn't on him, his descendants, because he saw his father's nakedness, he broke one of God's laws. 
So if God thinks is horrible for a child to see their parents nakedness, what do you think he thinks about a parent trying to have sex with their child? You see, we wouldn't have to be a Bible scholar to put one and one together and come up with two there, do we? Would we rather? No, we'd be clear that he wouldn't be okay with that either. So if a father rapes a daughter or uncle or cousin, do you actually think God would require that daughter to have that child? You, you would have to be a fool to think he would. If he would pronounce a curse on someone just for seeing their father naked, their father's nakedness. And of course, all the other scriptures he talked about in the Old Testament and New. So <clears throat> I've said, I'm against abortion as a means of birth control, but when it comes to these types of situations where I can clearly say, I can't say, you know, there is a scripture that says God is for a child, you know, blah, blah. But what I can say is, okay, look at all these scriptures where God was so against a child seeing their parents nakedness. So then I know by virtue of common sense that he would not be okay with a father molesting. He wouldn't be okay with incest. Incest is even talked about in the Bible. Incest is an, it's an abomination. It's wicked. And it's scriptures about that. So then if a daughter gets pregnant because of some ancestral situation, do you think God would, you don't think God would be okay with her having a medical procedure to get rid of the child? If God feels the way he does about animals, What did he say? All my Bible readers. He said, don't even boil an animal in their mother's milk. See, I think what the problem is, as I wind up, is that people like Sonny Host. Oh, and I love you, Sonny. You're my girl. I think you're fantastic. And what I'm saying doesn't change my thoughts about you. But honey, I disagree with you here strongly. Now I got the Bible behind me. What do you have? It is wrong for us to pick and choose. It's wrong for us to come out and say Jesus would be a, the grand marshal. He would, but what would he be doing? See, that's, the, that's what we would need to make clear. So my sister, you say you have no exceptions when it comes to abortion, even in the case of incest, when there are clear scriptures that talk about how God feels about incest. But yet you're okay. You see, there again, it's picking and choosing. It's picking and choosing. It's picking and choosing. I'm so doggone religious over here on this thing. But over here, well, even though all of that stuff, all of it is covered in the Bible that we all say we believe. So what I think the real problem is here, as I was about to say, is that Sonny Hostin and Sarah Haynes and Alyssa Farrah Griffin, they just don't really know their Bibles. They don't know it as well as they should. You say, you don't know that. You know what? You're doggone right. I don't. But what I do know is I've been watching this show now for a long, long time. And I've heard my girl, Sarah, and my girl, Sunny, talk about these things for years. And it seems to me when you hear someone talk about this subject for years and they never mention any of these other scriptures, well, it's possible that they may not know they're there. And why would they not know they're there? Possibly because they don't really know their Bible as well as they should. See, as a Christian, I can't pick and choose what I want to believe if I'm going to call myself a Bible believing Christian. And if that offends people in the LGBTQ plus community, oh, well. If it offends liars, oh, well. If it offends gluttons, oh, well. You fill in the blank. You fill in the blank. See, I have to say, God, you are my God and I've given my life to you. And because I know the danger of trying to be my own God. I choose to put myself up under your control and your command, not control in the sense that we think of it, but up under what God says is right and wrong. Because, see, if we just all are going to go around making up what we think is right and wrong, guys, we're we're, we're going to hell in a handbasket and our country is going to hell in a handbasket as well. That's why there's so much lawlessness here. See, we've let so many things just kind of ride and now things are out of freaking control and we're trying to reel it in and we just can't. So as I end, I will say, if you are one of my listeners, if you made it this far and you're part of the LGBTQ plus community, I'm sorry if finding out my thoughts on this hurts you, but I'm sorry. I'm with God. See, I'm a Bible believing Christian. And just like I believe the Bible says lying is wrong and overeating is wrong and mistreating my dog or my cat or my fish or whatever is wrong. Just like the Bible talks about giving, you know, uh, not 
forsaking the assembling of yourself together. See, all those things are there. Like the Bible talks about laying on hands and seeing people recover. See, I believe all of it because I've chosen that book to be the guide for my personal life. And if I'm a Christian and I'm on a panel or I'm here on my little corner of YouTube, see, I got to talk about it. I got to say, this is what the Bible says about all of it. Not, I can't pick and choose. If I do, can I really say I'm a Bible believing Christian? Or should, would it be more accurate to say, I'm a Christian, all right, mm-hmm, and I believe in God. But you know what? Really, when it comes down to it, I just decide what I'm going to believe versus what I'm not based on the day and time I live in. Even though God says he does not change from generation to generation, I'm still the same, he says. So, guys, that's what I have to say on this subject. If they bring this up again on the show, I'm going to come back and I'm going to counter the narrative again. I'm going to do the best job I can. I'm not here to hurt anybody. I'm not here to offend anybody. The last thing I would want to do is hurt those of you who are part of the LGBTQ plus community. But you have to be able to allow others to see things their way, just like you have a right to see it your way. Okay, guys, I'll talk to you on the next broadcast. Bye, y'all.